Hi everyone, I'm Yoro, and this is the second part of the tutorial for the new 3D modeling. So basically, now I'm going to teach you some real basics of like how your skins have to be set up and how to get into Maya maybe a bit easier, hopefully. So first of all, what do you need for a remodel? So as you can see here, you have a bunch of files. Now, first of all, you have an SK .skn file. This is basically the model. This is what you actually see in game. This is always connected with a SKL file. This is the skeleton for the model, which makes it so that it animates with the animations which the champion has, and without it, it wouldn't work. And then here you have a bunch of DDS files. Now this is just a loading screen, which doesn't directly work with the model. But those are all with the model. Maybe this one not too, but those three are definitely connected to the model directly. Because without textures, your model also won't work properly in-game. Now let's turn to Maya 2023. First of all, we're gonna set up a few tools you will need. For that you go to Windows and then, first of all, you need the Outliner. Now it might not be there for you, it might just be like a pop-up or something, but I like to put my tools just on the right side by doing that. This can be a bit tricky at times, as you can see. Now, the outliner shows everything that's in your scene, in your Maya. Like, for example, if I just create a polygon cube, here it now shows up. The default light set and default object set are always there, so you don't have to worry about those. Also, those currently, I think, disabled camera perspectives. Then next on, we need the hypershade which you can find under Windows, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. And this shows you all of the materials that are in your scene. Most of the new League of Legends models come with multiple materials. For example, if something just appears when your champion is recalling, that's usually or like always a new material. So you will also always have to work with that a bit. Also, you will need it to apply like textures inside your Maya scene. As a last thing, you will definitely need tool settings. With this under Windows General Editors and then Tool Settings. This is mostly needed for weight painting, which we get into later, of course. Now, what we're gonna do is actually import your League of Legends model into Maya itself. So, we wanna go to File and then Import. Now, make sure under Files of Type you enable League of Legends SKN. Now, as you can see, after you install the plugin, you have a bunch of League of Legends options, and we will need the SKN file here. After selecting that, go on the right side under Options, and on the bottom, there it says File Type Specific Options. Here, the first one is Import Skeleton, load SKL in the same directory, and bind with SKN a skin cluster, which we definitely need. And secondly, Import Mesh Separated by Material, which is really handy, because otherwise you will have to separate them manually if you want to work with them easily. For example, sometimes a material can cover the whole model. And then it's kind of hard to work with otherwise. Then just select your SKN and press import. Now, as you can see, we have a full on black ARRI, and now your outliner also has a bunch of things in it. Then, first of all, to see something, you want to go to lighting and then two sided lighting. Now you can see her model. We have those little purple things poking out everywhere. And then if you click here, you can actually see them properly, and that Specifically, is her SKL, her skeleton, which makes it so she animates. So, for example, also if you would select a bone and then drag it, you can see it moves in some way. So, if you want to, like, I don't know, just make her move her arm or something, it like it animates in some way. Now I'm gonna go. Get back to the bind post. So now I'm going to show you a few of the Maya selection modes in order to also explain some basics about the models. So first of all, by pressing F8, you get an object selection. You can also get component selection, which I don't really need uh, use. So which is kind of similar actually, but yeah, I don't use it. So object selection. Th with that, you can select whole meshes inside your Maya scene. For example, all of the different 
meshes it created from materials. You can also click on the model itself and then select it. Also important, you can select joints in the bones. But as you can see, all of the bones are a separate, like, I guess, object, you would say. And so you can select every one of them. Now, next one is F9, which is vertex selection. Now, vertices are those little connection points between triangles. So all of those single dots you have, those are vertices. And if you double click on that, you will select like smaller parts of the model. Those all are connected and like disconnected with the like the upper body and the skirt part. And next F10, we have edge selection. Now edges are all of those straight lines between vertices, basically. When you double click it, nothing seems to happen. Uh, I, I honestly don't really use that mode at all. So that's up to you. Then basically one of the most important ones next to object selection would be F11, which is faces selection. Now faces are those triangles in itself, which are connected by vertices again. And if you double click it, the same happens with uh, as with vertices. And that's basically what you will be using most of the time, at least that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going to view through the viewport together with you guys. So first of all, I like to have that little cube there. If you don't ha actually have that showing, you want to go to Windows Settings, Preferences and Preferences. Then go on the, on the interface on view cube and then just show the view cube. You can change the size and where it's placed and everything up to whatever you like. So first of all, how to rotate your scene, which I've been doing quite a bit in my tutorial already, is if you want, you want to hold down Alt and then click the left mouse button and then just move your mouse left and right and up and down and everything. As you can see, the view, view cube also moves through it. If you want to move the scene, you have to click Alt and then the middle mouse button. Or like your click on your mouse wheel, actually. Which also lets you move around like the whole scene. And if you just scroll, you can, yeah, you can zoom out and in. And with that cube, you can align your model. For example, if you want to see the perfect front of your model, you click there. And then if you want to go to the right side, you can click here and then you see the right side. And then you can move up and rotate back and everything. And then with the arrows, you can also rotate around. And it's really handy because sometimes in order to properly align models, you would need to view from like right or back or anything like that. And lastly, I'm going to go through those operators or tools, whatever you want to call them. First of all, if you press Q, you get the selection mode, which selects depending on whatever like mode you are in. Then if you press W, it moves. So you can use the arrows to move it like in a specific direction like they usually point upwards ref left and right and front and back so the xyz axes but you can also use the middle little square and move it freely and there are also some squares like that blue square on the outside which kind of does the same thing actually except you don't move it on all axes but only like mixed axis. So if you use the yellow one, you can only move it back and front, but not uh, back and left and right, but not upwards. Then if you press E, you get the rotate tool. Usually it's easiest to just use the outer ring. If you hold down J, you can rotate it in increments, so you can easily like rotate it by 90 degrees or something. But as you can see, you will need to stop, otherwise it just turns back and then you start using it again. I don't really use the other rotation modes because they can be a bit annoying to use. Like it's fine if you have a completely front facing model, but yeah, otherwise it can be a bit weird, especially those outer ones. And lastly, with R, you get the scaling tool. 
Again, if you use the middle, the one in the middle, you scale it in, in all directions in the same ratio. So that's easiest to just scale up a model completely. Now, if you get a bit experimental, you can also scale in certain directions, which can be useful, but can also easily make the model look really weird. So you will just have to see. Like, for example, this could be useful if you just need a long arm or something. But yeah, that's already it for the basic Maya overview. I hope this helps. And in the next part, I'm actually going to show you how you get to create your own model. So see you then, guys.